Once you've subscribed to Laser Map Maker, you'll be routed to a dashboard page. This is where all of your projects will be. And as you can see, we don't have any projects, so we're gonna go ahead and create a new one. You can name this anything you want. For this, I think we're just going to make a New York City map. And we're gonna go ahead and create project. This will route us to the studio where we will begin our editing. Welcome to Laser Map Maker Studio. Before we dive in and start making maps, there are a few important tools we need to point out first. On the right side of the studio, you'll see a button called Documentation. The documentation page shows you breakdowns of each feature we offer in the studio in video format. The toggle lock mode allows you to see the full map and the left-hand panel closed. The toggle lock mode allows you to lock the map so that you cannot bump it while you're working in the studio. Satellite overlay allows you to see more of the map so that you can find exactly where you want to be, zoom in, and once you're done, you can simply turn it off to start editing. The search bar is a great way to find exactly where you want to go, and in this case, we are going to go ahead and find New York City. You can also put in latitude and longitudes if you happen to know them, but in this case, we're just going to click and navigate to New York City. The zoom tool is great for being able to incrementally click in or back out at a small, medium, and large magnifying glass. You can also put your mouse directly over the map and you can scroll back or forth to be able to get it to zoom in or out. Rotate lets you turn the map in any direction. Aspect ratio and size is crucial for the frame you're going to want to export in. Before using it, I'd suggest you turn toggle full screen mode on. That way when you click the aspect ratio and you toggle through the preset options, you can see that they are varying in widths. For this, we are just going to use one one. And you can also come in here and capture a smaller or even bigger size of the screen based on your aspect. Now we're ready to dive in and start making up our layers. And you can do this by going to the left-hand panel, clicking Add Layer, and we're gonna need to give this a layer name. The first layer name we're gonna make is actually called Land Cut. And Land Cut has two features in it that I like to add, which are Land Fill and Water Fill. We're happy with this layer, so I'm gonna go ahead and create it. And now we have our Land and Water Fill. You can see this satellite image is actually still on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take that off so we can focus just on the layers. And now what I would like to do is I would like to tell the program ahead of time how I would like these files when they're exported. And to do that, we simply go to these three dots here and we're going to go over to configure layer options and configure layer options give you a couple choices here for tracing strategy, which is fill or outline. Fill will give you what you see currently on the screen, and outline is going to trace an outline of where water and roads meet. You can choose the format, which in this case we want the SVG format. And now here's something to remember is we're gonna want to make the border color the same as the land. And we have this cool little eyedropper that we can just click onto the land. And now our border is the same color as the land. And now if you were to cut out the blue, you could clearly see that land would stay intact. You can update the border width, but we're happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And this completes our land layer. So let's go ahead and move on. I like to put some small roads on the land and we're gonna to have to do that in a different layer because we're gonna have a different vector strategy. But uh, to do that, you need to go to add layer and then let's just call this land engrave because we're going to engrave little roads on it. And we can go down to this roads category here, maybe go to roadways. And for this, I believe it is uh, primary streets just from memory. And now I'll go ahead and create this layer. All right, so now you can imagine that the land will have these nice engraved lines on top of it. And of course, we're missing some very important roads and streets, and we'll get to that in a moment. 
But let's go ahead and look at the uh, configure layer options again. And for this, we actually don't need a border and you can leave a border, it actually doesn't matter. But the engraving is just gonna go on top of the land cut. So if you are a little confused, that's okay. Just know you really don't need a border for this. And so we'll just leave that blank. All right, land engrave and land cut are done. The last thing we wanna do is add some roads. When we add a layer here, we're gonna go ahead and make a roads cut layer because this is gonna go on top. And we're gonna find the roads and we're gonna find all the roadways and we're gonna select all of them. And I think also for this, uh, the bridges. And so now if you looked inside here, you could see we have these all selected. We may not want all of them, but we're gonna find out. Let's go ahead and create that layer and see what it looks like. That does look pretty good. It looks like there's a few things we may need to do. And I'll go ahead and get started by just clicking on three dots here. And instead of going into each one of these features and doing some sort of update, I'm gonna first try to do a mass update. So by clicking on this select all features and layer tool, I've now selected all these features. So what that does is it actually gives me the ability up here. See it says 18 lines selected. I can now click style. And now I'm looking at all of those roads and bridges layers all at once and able to change line widths and other things, which is what I'm going to do now. So if you scroll down to line width, we can override the line width and we can say like, hey, this needs to be probably closer to a seven. And now we have some nice thick lines. Uh, line caps are nice and round. We override these, looks a little bit better. You can see some more clarity now. The last thing we need to do is similar to what we did for land cut. We need to configure the layer options and turn the tracing strategy to outline so that when the roads get exported, they will trace just as the land will get traced. All right, I think that about does it. And you can't really see it because the land layer is on top, but if you're interested in seeing if your border was the right color, you just click the three dots and click up all the way till it's the top layer. And now you can see that there is black meeting black which is precisely how we are going to trace it and have everything weld together beautifully. Okay, and there was a few tools that I didn't mention in the beginning because I knew they'd make more sense once we had a map, and that is the toggle inspect mode. When this mode is on, it's really cool. You can hover over items and you can see them highlight. You can see the labels there at the bottom. I'm going to click and you can see it selected one feature. I can go into that feature and I can make it a different color and that feature is now updated. I'm gonna go ahead and change it back, but it's a really cool mode. Uh, it allows you to select even multiple features. If I can hover over, let's see a congested area, maybe I can get, yep, oh, right there. You can see, and then if I click that, both features are actually selected and I can go in and style those. There even may be something that you would like to delete and this is a great way to find it rather than sifting through your layers and features is to come over here and just hover over it and then once you click it, you will be able to go into the style or just click the trash can and, and delete it. Another awesome tool is the toggle border inspector and what this allows you to do is to see behind the border just in case you needed to align something very close and you needed to see behind the border. The last thing that I think would be worth mentioning is the map scale. When you have this map scale on, we have it at 100% at all times. Sometimes when you zoom out like this, you can start to lose detail. So we'll zoom out until we lose detail. And maybe you wanted your roads engraved at this detail. Well, when you go ahead and click map scale, it's going to make this bigger. And now when you zoom back in just a little bit, you can already start seeing that there's the detail for the roads and grave at a much higher level. And this is a great way for you to get high detail at a high zoom level. Now we can go to the preview export page for finalizing the export.
Before we export the files, we want to just give a glance and make sure everything looks right. So in this first tab, Layers here, you can see that Land Cut is selected. You can select different layers like this or these tiles down here. And as you can see, each one has a few options that we've talked about previously. If you didn't update them in the studio, you can come here and update them. This is a way to catch something that maybe you missed, a vector strategy or something like that. Tiling is another great option. You just need to enable it and then you can go through and select your rows and columns. Uh, there is a video on tiling. I won't get into the details, but for this, we are actually not going to do any tiling. And the last tab would be the export tab. The export tab shows you a layer summary telling you it's a vector file you with your chosen vector strategy and then your output formats. It gives you the cost at the bottom of how many credits it's going to cost. It's one credit per file. We have three files here. And now that we're all ready to export, we simply come down here and click the export button. You need to confirm that you have reviewed the layers and that you're happy with them. And then you can export. Now that we've exported, we can actually view our files from this exports page by just clicking this latest one that has a process of complete. And we can go ahead and open the output, which is the vector strategy of trace. And we can clearly see that these lines will be nice cut lines and leave us with the land layer. Another thing we're going to need for the land layer, which is going to be engraved on top, is these black lines and it looks like it did a really nice job. So once you're done with the land layer, put the engrave lines in the same spot you did for the land cut and engrave on top of them. And finally, we have the roads layer. This is gonna go on top of the land. And as you can see, we'll be able to cut all these roads out very nicely and the border will keep everything nice and intact. So you are ready to get rolling, choose your favorite design software, head over, pull your files in, and set them up for laser cutting and engraving.